Today on Investigate TV Plus, black women in America face a healthcare crisis. I'm Lee Zurich. And I'm Tisha Powell. We examine the social factors contributing to the soaring death rate for expecting moms. Plus, a fraud alert text from a bank can get your attention, but there's also a chance it's a scam. Thinking back now, you're like, yeah, I did everything. I made all the moves, but he coached me through it and made me feel like he was a legitimate agent. We show you how to recognize smishing and the steps to take to protect your money. And celebrating the gift of music. A teacher finds harmony in life from his passion for playing the piano. In-depth stories that inform and inspire. You're watching Investigate TV Plus. In May of 2023, at just 32 years old, Olympic track star Tori Bowie unexpectedly died. Published reports say Bowie was eight months pregnant when she and her baby were found dead in her Florida home. An autopsy released the following month revealed she died from complications of childbirth, including respiratory distress and eclampsia, a disorder related to high blood pressure in pregnancy. Bowie's death, the latest to highlight pregnancy complications that disproportionately impact black women. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says black women are three times more likely to die from childbirth than white women in the United States. The CDC found multiple factors contribute to these disparities, including quality health care, structural racism, and implicit bias. We go in depth with the doctors and healthcare advocates who are raising awareness and taking action to save mothers and babies. My sister was an amazing soul. For former Baton Rouge NAACP president Eugene Collins, the memories of his sister Jessica Collins Ruffin are bittersweet. <laughs> Every one of my birthdays, uh, she would always bake me a cake and she would put my fraternity letters on top of the cake and you know how important that is to us. In March of 2020, Colin's sister was starting a catering business when she became pregnant with her second child, a son she named Jace. Colin says everything was going well for Jessica until her last trimester when she thought something was wrong and went to the hospital. The emergency room actually sent her back home. On her way back home, their mom, who Colin says had previously worked for a doctor, urged her daughter to go back to the ER. Went back to the emergency room, they set her back in the, in the waiting room and she sat there and had a stroke. Colin says Jessica and her baby boy died just days apart. If they had just listened to her the first time and took her back, I, I believe fully that she's still sitting here. 80% of maternal deaths are preventable. Preventable, yes, and um, we know that from um, data from the CDC. Dr. Faith Fletcher is a public health researcher and bioethicist at Baylor College of Medicine. She says there's something unique about maternal mortality because it impacts black women of all ages, incomes, and education levels. Feeling like they're not heard in healthcare encounters, feeling that they aren't respected, um, and we believe and have some evidence that these factors certainly um, lead to negative or adverse health outcomes amongst black women. Maternal fetal medicine specialist Dr. Keisha Reddick echoes Dr. Fletcher, saying many black women feel their concerns are brushed off by their doctor. We have to take the complaints and the concerns of the patient seriously, and we have to address them. Even if we think that it is maybe a normal symptom that you may have, we need to explain to the patient, well, this may be normal, a different symptom might not be normal. But a May of 2019 study by the National Institutes of Health found that normal for black women is often discrimination and poor treatment by healthcare providers. Doctors and nurses were less likely to identify pain in the facial expressions of faces of black patients than non-black patients. Because they couldn't see it, the study says those healthcare providers were less likely to believe a black patient was experiencing severe discomfort or acute pain. And Dr. Fletcher believes that fight to improve maternal care for black women should start with training and regaining trust. We have to think about becoming a more trustworthy system so that we can regain the confidence and the trust of especially patients of color and other mi minoritized patients. And what are the solutions? How can we work to change things? With this generation um, of students, they're actually in some ways um, mentoring up 
um, their experiences and awareness of social issues and police brutality and um, healthcare um, mistreatment has really helped, um, I would say, to enhance our intellectual medical community um, with the tools and raising things and challenging the current systems to really improve and transform. As for Eugene Collins, he hopes the medical community will start taking more notice so no other family will have to endure what he did. They had done their job, man. I, I believe my sister and my nephew, they'll be here today. The death of Eugene Collins' sister did lead to change in the state of Louisiana. In May of 2023, Governor John Bell Edwards signed the Jessica Collins Ruffin Act. The new law opens the door for more women to turn to a midwife for their pregnancy needs by offering Medicaid reimbursements. This means more low-income families will have access to midwifery services. And on Mother's Day 2023, Congresswomen Alma Adams, Lauren Underwood, and Senator Cory Booker reintroduced the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act. It's made up of 13 bills that address critical improvements necessary to give black women better health outcomes. Our in-depth report continues as we go one-on-one -on -one with Representative Underwood. We know that our nation's maternal health crisis is getting worse. Representative Lauren Underwood is a registered nurse and the co-founder and co-chair of the Black Maternal Health Caucus. A time of eager anticipation of welcoming a new addition to the family is now being marked by grief and tragedy. Representative Underwood, along with North Carolina Congressman Alma Adams and New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, recently reintroduced the Black Maternal Health Momnibus Act to address what they call a growing crisis in the United States. States. The Momnibus Act includes more than a dozen individual bills that would, among other things, provide funding to community-based organizations that are working to improve maternal health outcomes and promote equity, invest in digital tools to improve maternal health outcomes in underserved areas, and make critical investments in social determinants of health that influence maternal health outcomes like housing, transportation, and nutrition. It's designed to address every clinical and non-clinical factor that's contributing not only to maternal death in this country, but the disparities that we see that are impacting black moms the most. Representative Underwood has been trying for years to pass the entire momnibus package. Although portions, including one to protect mothers who are veterans, have been signed into law, much of the momnibus is under negotiation. Representative Underwood remains optimistic there are pathways for the entire Momnibus Act to pass Congress. These are challenges that we have to solve together. Uh, the idea of maternal death and maternal mortality, that's not a partisan issue, right? All of us want to make sure that our moms can survive what should be a joyous experience. The Momnibus Act of 2023 does have the endorsement of more than 200 organizations, including the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, the March of Dimes, and the American Heart Association. All right, Tisha, this is a, an important topic, obviously. Individual states are pushing for their own forms of the Momnibus Act, like the Jessica Collins Ruffin Act in Louisiana, right? And that's right. Some women may not want an OBGYN. Instead, they may want a midwife to support them during pregnancy. And the new law provides increased reimbursement rates through Medicaid and hopefully more midwives will accept it. Advocates see this new law as a start, but they say there's a long way to go. And on the flip side, black patients are also seeking out obstetricians, but a recent report by the National Medical Association says what only 5.7 percent of doctors are black. Yeah, both Dr. Fletcher and Representative Underwood mentioned the need for more black doctors. Dr. Fletcher specifically talked about the need for more research to understand the medical and social complexities around maternal health inequities. She also talked about addressing this crisis with healthcare workers and health policy makers and advocating for transformation and the delivery of medical education. So really thinking about how doctors are taught in medical school and how that affects their patients in the long run. So many lessons to be learned from this topic and as we said I mean it's so important just look what happened in in Baton Rouge yeah. to that family people's just, lives depend on it no doubt about that all right a new tool using artificial intelligence can determine your true age still to come the medical myth buster shows us how Mayo Clinic doctors are using this technology to help you live longer 
But first, the text message may look like it's from your bank, but beware. I answered, it was the Wells Fargo agent, so I thought, um, telling me that there had been some you know, unusual activity on my account. We show you how to avoid a texting scam that could put your finances at risk. It begins with what looks like a legitimate text from a bank, but clicking or calling could turn into a costly choice. Fake bank text messages are a type of smishing scam, which fraudsters use text messages to impersonate financial institutions and fish for sensitive information to trick victims into sending their money. Smishing attacks use text messages as the primary method of communication, where phishing attacks typically occur through email. A March 2023 report by RoboKiller found that Americans received 225 billion spam and robotechs in 2022, a 157% increase from the prior year. Reporter Susan Campbell exposes the tricks fraudsters use to get your personal information and the red flags you need to know. One text. It said, Wells Fargo alerts did you authorize a $4,427.10 wire slash quick pay to Alice Rear? Reply yes or no or text stop to opt out. Kelsey Harrett responded no. Little did she know that's all it took for her to end up on a scammer's hook. And within a half a second, I get a call. I answered it was the Wells Fargo agent, so I thought. Um, telling me that there had been some, you know, unusual activity on my account. Kelsey checked and confirmed the number was Wells Fargo's customer service line. She didn't realize it had been spoofed. Now, according to the caller, Kelsey needed to transfer her money into a new secure bank account. He even went as far as saying, um, you know, as a Wells Fargo agent, I will never ask you to repeat any passwords or any of your specific login information to me. And so he was like making me feel comfortable and safe. Wells Fargo she got a case number, a case manager, a new account number and a new routing number. None of it was real, but Kelsey still didn't know it. Thinking back now, you're like, yeah, I did everything. I made all the moves, but he coached me through it and made me feel like he was a legitimate agent. She transferred almost $2,000 out of her account and right into the scammer's hands. Financial institutions have always been a huge bullseye and a target, but it's not the institution themselves because they have the ability to protect their environments. So what's the criminal going to do? Take the path of least resistance and attack the consumers. Martin Bensick is a cybersecurity expert. He says scammers are using fraudulent emails, text messages, and bad links to trick people into handing over money and personal information. And according to the Federal Trade Commission, bogus bank fraud warnings, like the one Kelsey received, are the most common form of text message scam reported to the agency. People need to be vigilant and take a look at where they're responding. If they get a notification from a bank, pick up the phone and call the bank the phone number that you know the bank to, not the one that the bad guy provides you. It could save you. The FTC says consumers reported losing $330 million to text message scams last year. He had said within 24 hours I would be receiving new bank information. So the next morning I woke up and I just had a feeling. I was like, I'm not getting that new bank information, am I? Kelsey knows her money's gone. She says the bank already opened and closed its fraud investigation. It was, you know, just shy of $2,000, which is a lot of money, but I will recover from that. There's, you know, sweet little old ladies out there who might be trusting and sending their entire life savings and might not recover from that. A Wells Fargo fraud information officer says you should never share personal information. NerdWallet also recommends if you received a fraud text that you don't make any moves under pressure. Don't click on any links from an unsolicited text message and don't call a phone number that's texted to you. Still to come, inspiring the sounds of joy. When I was sitting in 10th grade, fifth period science class, it came to me just as plain as day, major in music. A teacher celebrates 40 years of sharing his love of music. 
But first, a number you can't ignore. The medical MythBuster shows you why your heart age may be older than you actually are and shares the steps you can take to reverse the clock. The saying goes, you're only as young as you feel, but on the flip side, can you be older than you look? In this medical myth buster, reporter Viv Williams explores how artificial intelligence helped Mayo Clinic cardiology experts figure out you may have more control over the aging process than you think. What is it about those people who look like they're in their 40s but are actually much older? Maybe they just have good genes. Well, that could be. But the myth is, if you're not one of those people, you just have to live with it. Well, experts from Mayo Clinic debunk that myth by comparing people's real age to their heart age. They use artificial intelligence to analyze echocardiograms, or ECGs, to determine how old someone is according to the health of their heart. The researchers then compare that number to the real chronological age of their patient. When the computer is telling us that this individual is older than what this individual truly is in terms of years of age, we have seen that those individuals die sooner. Dr. Francisco Lopez Jimenez, a Mayo Clinic preventive cardiologist, says that on the other hand, if the technology determines someone's heart is younger than their chronological age, those individuals live longer and have less heart attacks and less um, heart events of any type. So what should you do if you find out your heart age is actually older than your real age? Well, Dr. Lopez Jimenez says you can narrow or even eliminate that gap by making some lifestyle changes. It doesn't take long. Lopez Jimenez says you can make a difference in as little as a week. What we are doing these days is to use this information to motivate people uh, to change behavior, to exercise more, to stop smoking, to worry less, to work on their uh, stress level. Lopez Jimenez says by working on those factors, you can reduce the age of your heart and improve overall health. With this Medical Mythbuster, I'm Viv Williams. The doctor we spoke to says living a heart healthy life will not just help to lower your risk of cardiovascular disease, it will also reduce your risk of developing other conditions, including diabetes and some cancers. A Georgia teacher strikes a chord with his students. I have been doing this a long time and the passion is still there. I still want to do it 40 more years if God allows me to live because this is where my heart is. Up next, the music that inspires him to keep making a difference. Errol Roach's love for music started at the age of four when he started playing by ear. A few years later, Errol's parents gave him a piano so he could follow his dream to create and teach music. Reporter Sam Bowman in Savannah, Georgia goes behind the music to learn the keys to Errol's 40-year career. When I was about four years old, I started playing by ear. And so when I would hear songs on television, commercials, jingles, or even at church, I would come home and try to emulate what I heard on the piano. For Errol Roach, there was really never another path but music. I'm gonna just do this one. When I was sitting in 10th grade, fifth period science class, it came to me just as plain as day, major in music. And that's exactly what he would do attending what is now Savannah State University, where just a year in, at age 19, he started passing down his love of music through lessons out of his parents' Carver Village home. They invested in a brand new piano, and for African Americans, you know, lower middle class, that was a big thing. And that wouldn't be the last time they invested in their son's dream. They helped me to find a place to centralize the lessons. So they purchased my furniture, my office furniture, and all of that, so they got me started. So if it were not for Mr. and Mrs. Roach, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. What he's been doing is the same thing he's been doing for the past 40 years, teaching music. An achievement he was recognized for in June through a proclamation from Savannah Mayor Van Johnson. And someone was here the other day and they were saying, well, how did you feel when people were saying all these things about you? 
I'm like, it kind of just really went over my head because I know that it's because of God I'm doing it. And it's not about me. It's about the gift that brings glory to God and that's a blessing to others. A blessing he has now been sharing with others for four decades. Well, I have some students, you know, who have gone on to be producers and running their own music studios in Atlanta and different places around the country. And as much as he's given music over the years, music has also given him quite a bit in return. I met my wife because of music. She was a choir director and I started playing for the choir. <laughs> so we've been making music together ever since. And he doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon. I have been doing this a long time and the passion is still there. I still want to do it 40 more years if God allows me to live because this is where my heart is. His heart, like his piano, tuned to play a song that reverberates in the souls of all who listen. And each of us, like a single note that when put together can create something truly beautiful. The slogan for uh, the Sound of Joy School of Music is for a world of harmony. And so my prayer and my hope is that my students will pass on this gift of music that will bring unity and harmony all over the world. And that's it for us on Investigate TV Plus. I'm T. Chappelle. And I'm Lee Zurich. Thanks for watching. On the next Investigate TV Plus, Americans buy recalled products without knowing the risks. And she says, we need to tell families about this, about these, this pool drain thing so that no one, I don't want any other kids to get hurt like I got hurt. Hear from a father who fought to get a product banned after his daughter's death. Plus, we get an in-depth look at how the federal government is trying to catch these dangerous items.